Let's watch this. This is breaking news. Some good news. Let's do some good news. Uh, from friends of the show, More Perfect Union. Uh, TV and movie writers just voted to authorize a strike that could shut down Hollywood. Writers are making less than they were 10 years ago while corporate profits have skyrocketed, and they are not standing for it. Let's take a look. I write for a show called Abbott Elementary that's on ABC, which is a traditional network. But the next day, we're on Hulu, and a little bit after that, we're on HBO Max and Disney+. Plus. So the amount for... I can't wait for this to to be, uh, of course, uh, not received as like a real working class labor union strike because they're Hollywood, you know, or they're black and gay, you know, a typical like aesthetic focused fucking weirdos will overlook this kind of uh, labor action. For a rear on the network is $13,500 and the amount that you're paid for that episode being on new media streaming is $700. Hollywood is broken. And no, it's not because Chris Pratt was cast as Mario or that Emperor Palpatine somehow came back from the dead in the last Star Wars movie, although those are both admittedly bad. Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> It's because the television industry has evolved in a way that abandons the very people who bring richness and diversity in characters and stories to our screens. Yes, we're talking about streaming. And while I've been a part of the onslaught of people sitting at the feet of HBO Max on many Sunday nights waiting for the next episode of Game of Thrones to drop, I would hope and expect that the people who wrote that masterpiece are being rewarded for captivating all of our eyeballs. Well, they're not. Not like they used to be anyway. The economic pillars that our industry have been built upon have in the last decade been turned on their head. Television writers are being paid less money for these complex, multifaceted, unique narratives that bring companies like Warner Bros, Disney, and Netflix billions upon billions of dollars every year. And now, writers are understandably at their limits. And soon, that could affect you. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Right now, Hollywood writers are in a heated contract dispute with the nine largest production studios. At the center of that fight is something called residuals, one of the most important ways that writers get paid. Residuals are payments that are made every quarter by the companies to the writers for the content that they create. The WGA contracts that currently exist were built upon a model where the content providers generated the revenue through ad sets. So if I write an episode of television that re-airs over and over and over again, every time that episode re-airs, the content provider generates revenue and a little piece of that revenue gets shared with everyone that contributed to the creation of it. Now, their revenue is made almost exclusively through uh, monthly or annual subscriptions. So there is no re-airing. People can watch what they want, when they want, which means that we're not getting the same residuals that we once would have. What I'm accustomed to as a broadcast writer, as a residual, like $20,000 for an episode of TV, in streaming, I just got a check for the same project for $23. And what's happening a lot is that at a certain point, after a certain couple of years, a streamer has... Isn't Will Neva a screenwriter for his day job? Does this affect him or does he know anything about it personally? I mean, Will, it, I think Will is W uh, Writers Guild, but he's not a screenwriter for his day job. What do you mean? He doesn't like write currently on a fucking TV show or a movie or something. What do you think, like, like, you think Will is just, like, writing for a TV show secretly, like, as it stands? I do have a lot of writer friends who uh, are, you know, I do have writer friends who have written for TV shows that are in circulation that also end up going to a streamer. And, yes, the residuals are cut very short, uh, unfortunately, because streamers are seen as a way for, like, larger... Uh, corporations to to maintain uh, a, a higher percentage uh high, higher percentage of the profits sorry to continue paying residuals and instead of doing that they much rather just pull the product from their app and so that's what we're seeing a lot of content that we create five years from now completely gone and we are not getting 
any residual compensation out of it. So if you have a favorite show that you loved that you can't find anywhere anymore, it's because those content providers don't want to pay the creators of the show for the right to air. Remember when HBO Max removed its very own Emmy award-winning hit Westworld from its streaming library? Hate to break it to you, that was over residuals. Another issue at the heart of the writer's contract dispute is something called mini rooms, which is basically a cute way to refer to writer's rooms that essentially do the same work with a fraction of the workers in a fraction of the time to turn over a larger profit. Historically speaking, a writer's room was generally only constructed for a program that had been ordered to series that you were guaranteed to see at least the first few episodes of on television. It meant that the content providers spent millions of dollars on a pilot episode. They watched the pilot episode. They said, we love this. Let's order it to series. And a writer's room was created. Increasingly, they are saying, you know what? Let's not spend those millions of dollars on a pilot. Let's spend significantly less money on a number of mini rooms where we will hire a smaller number of writers per project and we will order two or three or four, or however many scripts without actually shooting any of it. And then we can look and, and read those scripts and decide whether or not this is a season of television we want to invest tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in. And what writers were seeing a lot of were the streamers were only going to pay weekly compensation to uh, all writers regardless of level. So no, you could be a co-executive producer with 10 years of experience who might have sold some development so you have a proven track record. You could be making the same as a staff writer who this is their very first job right out the gate. We should be able to say, hey, I'm making more money now than I was making 10 years ago because that's how careers work in every industry. You don't work the same job for 10 years and make less money than you did when you first started doing it. And that's what's happening to us. It's fine if they want to hire us weekly on shows that have not been ordered to series yet, that they're just collecting scripts for. But we need to be compensated in the same way that we were compensated when we were writing shows that they were putting on the air. It's the same time and creative energy being put into those scripts, the fact that these content providers might be choosing not to make them doesn't mean that we're working less hard on them and that. Yeah, I mean, every single battle in entertainment that has been fought over the course of the past, like, uh, five years have almost always and entirely revolved around streamers because streamers are owned, like the streaming platforms are owned. I uh, don't know. I don't know. He just got here. Um, they're owned by the companies themselves. They're owned usually by the the major, like uh, the the major publishers themselves. So it's a way for them to uh, squeeze out more profit from the same uh, works, the same IP. Wasn't the last writer strike about this very same thing? No, it wasn't a writer strike about this. Um, that was, uh, that was like producers, stagehands and, and everyone else involved with, uh, the, the streamers. That was Iatse. Iatse. Uh, and then before then it was, um, it wasn't producers. What was it? There was another one. There was another strike that revolved around streamers. Last writer strike guild was people not getting paid. No, I'm not talking about the mid 2000s one. No, no, no. There was another fuck, what was it? No, the Iatse one is different. The the Iatse one was about uh like producers and film set workers not getting paid. Like people It was uh WGA versus the agencies. Oh, okay. It was the Writers Guild versus the agencies. But that was about uh, streamers as well. <sighs> the writer strike had killed that killed heroes. What a disappointment of a TV show. I mean, David Zaslav of Warner Bros. is one of the most overpaid CEOs in history. I mean, yeah, okay. 
the Ayatse one was different. The Ayatse one was the one that we covered uh, recently. That, that was about uh, offering more, uh, like hiring more and having uh, less uh, time on call because they were having and, 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 you know, setting standards for like hotel accommodations and whatnot, uh, like quality of life improvements in the workplace. Totally reasonable questions. Uh, totally reasonable demands that they had. They were working like insane, like 14, 15 hours and then fucking falling asleep while driving home. We should be paid less for the creation of them. At the end of the day, this all comes down to greed. In 2000, the combined entertainment operating profits of the production studios was $5 billion. By 2019, with the advent of streaming and the addition of companies like Netflix in the mix, they were up to $30 billion. Streaming has boosted corporate profits, but writers are actually earning less now. It is absolutely undeniable that the streaming platforms are generating mountains of money through their subscription base. What they're choosing to do with that money is an entirely different question. There's this misconception outside of Hollywood that writers are bougie, six-figure, people who live in palaces in Beverly Hills, and why are they complaining about <laughs> what more compensation? And that couldn't be far from the truth. The fight that the writers in this industry are battling is probably not very different <coughs> from the fight that they or friends or relatives have been facing with the consolidation of power and money. There are fewer and fewer corporations holding more and more of the purse strings and protecting the coffers and the coins more and more greedily. And that's certainly not unique to our industry. We are making less money now than we were making 10 years ago. And the industry is shifting to prioritize streaming. And none of our pay structure or the amount of money that we're paid reflects those changes. They are treating everything like TV operates the same as it did 10 years ago. And I think everyone, even viewers, know that's just not true. The industry needs to catch up. If push comes to shove, a strike is incredibly important to show these companies that we mean business and that we won't stand for them trying to take our livelihoods in Hollywood. I found out my neighbor in my modest apartment building was a writer for a pretty famous show. They're definitely not getting paid six figures law, especially not anymore. I there was a time and place in America where you could have, like, one commercial jingle and you could, like, get a fucking fat stack of cash off that shit. You know what I mean? Uh, those times have are, are long gone. Not, like, a real viable career any longer. You know? If it's anything like previous writer strike, there will be an uptick in reality TV to fill the gaps. So remember to boycott reality TV. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But, um, but yeah, there will probably be an uptick in reality TV. Someone in the chat was mentioning that uh, HBO Max rebranding the Max right in time with a Discovery merger. Okay. Uh, with the Discover merger, uh, will actually create a lot more reality TV focused content. Remember TLC and shit. So, we will get even more unhinged stuff. That's the last time. Reality TV popped off the last time there was a major writer strike because uh, they moved away from scripted to non-scripted. So, we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, let's be real. A lot of movies and TV shows have sucked for a while now. A strike doesn't seem like a bad thing. Yeah, you're right, man. You don't like the TV shows and movies that are coming out. So I think those people should not get paid. I agree. And that uh, more importantly than that, it's not even them getting paid. I think that the people who are pumping out this kind of content, who are demanding this kind of content, the executives, because they think consumers are going to enjoy it, should take more of their profits. Because the conversation should always be centered around who gets to keep the profits. So when you make an argument like that, when you talk about like, oh, well, TV shows suck nowadays, it's all woke. Or, I don't know, TV shows suck nowadays, it's all bland and boring. 
I don't necessarily disagree with you. I'm not watching these fucking TV shows, but someone is. And these TV shows are still making money. So what you're essentially saying is that I want the CEOs to retain larger shares of the value that is being created from these TV shows that people are watching, not me, others, okay? And, and you know, give it back to their shareholders instead of the people that are making the TV shows, whether it be the, the production crew, or whether it be, like, the actual cast and crew, whether it be the actual writers or the directors, but instead just the people that don't actually touch it, but the money people, the people that handle the money. That's crazy to me. I think that that's wild. Not as wild as the top of the hour ad break, which still ends up going, in some respects, to Amazon, okay? A piece of that goes back to Amazon by way of Twitch, but I retain a percentage of that. Why? Because I have some level of power in, in uh, contract negotiations as an individual content creator that other people in other industries would never have unless they have a union. That's right. This is how we'll get you back on Vanderpump Rules. Anyway, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. You already know. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You'll get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me. Here's the three-minute ad break now.